Hello dear learners, I welcome you all to this module on the Mayor of IBs of Manipur and the purpose of this module is to showcase it as a success story of women's collective initiatives to empower themselves through participation in economic activities to secure livelihood. In the previous module, we have gone through the initiative called SEWA, that means Self-Employed Women's Association, which is a trade union based in Ahmedabad and which was formed for providing livelihood opportunities to women for their economic empowerment. There are various small and large sector enterprises which have been launched for ameliorating the status of women as well as girls who are generally deprived of their rights and ownership in the family as well as in the society. Perhaps we all know that in order to enable us to live with dignity and with a sense of responsibility, some social movements have taken place from time to time in certain parts of the country. The Meira Paibi movement is one of them which took place for removing and reducing social injustice and deprivation prevalent against women or mothers in a northeast Indian state like Manipur. This movement would keep reminding us that for starting or getting the required livelihood, there is a need to reduce social inequalities and social deprivation among the people irrespective of their class, caste and gender. Therefore, in order to create some awareness among the learners like you regarding how a social movement like the Mera Pai B played a major role in ensuring socio-economic mobilization and political empowerment of women in an Indian state like Manipur, this module is included as part of the MUKON skill development of the youth and their livelihood. Besides, it is important to note that such movement played a constructive role in a more complex and conflict situations in Manipur. Besides, for ensuring economic mobility, particularly for the disadvantageous groups of the society, history also reminds us that there is a need of some organizations or groups that speak about the rights or ownership of the marginalized sections and bring economic mobilization in a collective form. The Mayra IB is such a social movement that was formed to raise ownership of the women in a collective way. I hope that the success story of the Mira Paibis will encourage you and also motivate you to lead a life of dignity as a responsible citizen with adequate knowledge and tenacity to work for the betterment of yourselves and for your own societies. Let us quickly look at who are the Mira Paibis. Mira Paibi is the Manipuri word for a woman with a flaming torch in hand. It is loosely translated as a woman torch bearer. Manipur is a small state in the northeastern region of India and has a long connection with Assam. At the time of independence, Manipur was a princely kingdom and became part of India in October 1949. Mera Paibi is an epitome of female empowerment. Its uniqueness lies in the power of women in a few socially accepted activities in a patriarchal society. Despite the restrictions faced by a woman, Mera Paibis or a group of women torch bearers has played an determining role in the fight against social injustices in the Manipuri society as well as in empowering women. Women's empowerment is the process and the outcome of the process by which women gain greater control over material and intellectual resources and challenge the ideology of patriarchy and gender-based discriminations against women in all the institutions and structures of society. It has a transformative influence on women as a whole. The growing intrinsic capacity, greater self-confidence, and the inner transformation of women's consciousness enable them to have a more realistic social perspective. Agency, an important component of empowerment, include the ability to formulate strategic choices, to gain autonomy and to control resources and decisions, and take decisions that affect important life outcomes. Women are expected to develop the authority, greater freedom of movement, autonomy and attitudinal changes through education, work participation and exposure to mass media. Mass media also plays an important empowering role in situations where the majority of the women are illiterate or have 
very little education. Mass media inculcates greater awareness of real social issues among women, making their activities realistic and more down to earth. The Mayra Paibi movement is an example of empowerment of women through agency. A demand for visibility, the linear movement from inside to outside and darkness to light has been central to their claims for political recognition. Whether it is through shifts in sartorial practices such as shedding the veil or forms of mobility such as inhabiting public spaces, the transition from victimhood to agency is often envisaged through acts of stepping into the public eye. However, it would be incorrect to suggest that this is unique. Women have taken lead roles in mostly non-political activities protesting against any intrusion on their livelihood. Now we shall have a look at the Mira Paiwi's movement as a whole. The movement called the Mira Paiwi movement can be better understood if we peep into the recent history of Manipur and try to understand the origin of their social space in a patriarchal setup. Seven years occupation of Manipur by Burma during 1890 to 26 literally decimated Manipur in every sense. The population of Impal fell sharply as they either fled or were taken to Burma as prisoners of war. The normal functioning of the economy collapsed along with the social network. The intermittent wars fought by different clans and various tribes in Manipur kept the main folk fully engaged in war or operation for war. This compelled the women to take up the responsibility of local trade and commerce. The markets where sailors from different parts of Manipur would come provided not only a place of exchanging goods and services but also a central place for exchanging information about the events across the state. Most of the punishments awarded to people with, devi with deviant behavior were meted out mostly in the marketplaces. Thieves and people in illicit relationships were generally punished in the marketplaces. These examples would be watched by the women in the market and it would spread in their localities when they returned home. Bullock carts and boats would bring the goods of the market from far off places. They gave the women a unique space in an otherwise highly patriarchal Manipuri society. Since attaining statehood in 1972, only a handful of Manipuri women could become member of the Legislative Assembly. Not a single woman has ever been included in the numerous peace talks between insurgent groups and the Government of India in progress uh, across the state. Yet, women have always been in the forefront fighting against social injustice. They are the guardian angels particularly in the Meite society, protecting it from evils like alcoholism, unjustified arrest by state actors, drug abuse, etc. Some of them have taken up issues like crimes against women, trafficking of women and girls, family disputes and provisions of support to destitute women, etc. The members of the Meiro Paibim group, known as Imas or Mothers, are highly respected and rarely have they been ever charged for being without integrity. Most Mera Paibis are married women, and by an unwritten convention, young women generally are not members of the Mera Paibis. The Mera Paibis can be considered a manifestation of women's place in the Meite society. The Mera Paibi movement grew out of the seeds sown in earlier engagements of Manipuri women against social injustice. They have always occupied a significant place in the society by organizing themselves against what they considered to be social injustice. In the recent past, they challenged the British authority in 1904 and 1939 in the form of first women's agitation and second women's agitation respectively. In 1904, the Manipuri women rose against the order of the British officials to make all men folk to go to Myanmar to collect wood for reconstruction of a house burned by unknown arsonists. The British officials relented and the order was withdrawn. In 1939, women agitated against the state authority comprising the king and the British political agent against excessive export of rice leading to scarcity of rice. It became known as the second women's agitation which is observed on December 12th every year as Nupi Lan. The uniqueness of the movement, however, 
lies in the fact that in the emergence of a new Manipur after the end of the Second World War, it was the women of Manipur who emerged as the vanguard of change. The president of Nikhil Manipuri Mahasabha, Hijam Irawat Singh, came out openly in support of the women agitators. He resigned and formed the new political organization called Manipur Praja Sammelani uh, on 24 December 1939. Irawat and his followers helped in the transformation of the issue of the movement from being a purely economic one to a broader political issue. It will be correct to say that the above mentioned two women's agitation had sown the seeds of the spirited action characterized by defiance of the authority by women in a patriarchal society. The seeds of defiance and the spirited fight against social injustice sown in these events seamlessly led to the emergence of Manipuri women as the largest grassroots civilian group fighting against the atrocities and human rights violation in Manipur by state and non-state actors. The early 70s witnessed a society sinking in alcoholism, drug, and narcotics. Women volunteered as usual to take heed of these social evils. Women vigilant groups known as the Nesabandis rose against alcoholism, drug addiction, and violence against women. They lobbied extensively for provision of liqueur. Provision was introduced officially in Manipur in 1991 and since then every attempt by the government to lift it to earn the much needed revenue has been thwarted by the powerful Mayra Paibi lobby. In one such state level conference to take stock of the benefits and costs of prohibition in the state, late Ima Kombi, a renowned woman, activi woman activist from Manipur, openly declared that it could be lifted over her dead body only. The next phase of the women's movement as a collective force in Manipur was in the beginning of the 1980s when Manipur was wrecked by insurgency. The Manipur Valley was declared a disturbed area where the infamous Armed Forces Special Powers Act 1958 became operational and large contingents of security and paramilitary forces were deployed. This act gave untrammeled power to the security personnel. This act literally gave power to the security personnel to arrest and even kill suspects without the normal process of law. Every youth became vulnerable to disappearance, arrests and killing when innocent civilians were affected due to the indiscriminate arrests and assaults, killings, disappearance of youths, raping of women, sexual abuse of minor boys, etc. Women spearheaded the movement to protect the innocent people which eventually became known as the Mera Paibis or Torch Bearers and their organization as the Mera Paibi organization. Torches were symbols of female civic existence which continuously underlined and recalled the vital socio-political role that women played in archaic and classical Athens. Torch bearing females signified their escape from secluded quarters of the household. The use of torches as a weapon symbolizes the declaration of a just war or the use of fire as a sacred symbol underscoring the sanctity of the movement. The movement reappeared in the limelight when Manoroma, a young lady, died in the hands of the Assam Rifles personnel under mysterious circumstances in 2004. The shock people unleashed the phase of civil disobedience through buns and dharnas. Incidentally, the report of the inquiry commission that investigated this event was never made public and the recommendation of the Zivan Reddy Commission to repeal this act was not implemented. The women were so shocked that 12 prominent Merabaibi leaders protested by disrobing themselves in front of the main Assam Rifles came in the heart of Impal. The landmark protest called attention to the conception of the body as a markedly public site, both formed through and participating in regimes of visuals. This deliberate act of unclothing and the verbal challenge created the effect of a conscious deployment of the body. 28 May and 29 December are important dates for the Mera Paibi movement. 28 May 1980 marked the date of S. Priya Devi, who was protesting against the atrocities committed by the CRPF subsequent to an earlier attack on the CRPF and, is ob and it is observed as the Mera Paibi Day. 29 December 20, uh, 1980 uh, was the day when 
Lorembam Ibomcha, an innocent civilian, died in the custody of JNK rifles after being falsely implicated in a bomb blast. And this has come to be considered the foundation day of the Mira Paibi movement, a statement endorsed by none other than Ima Ramani, a leading activist of the movement. Now we shall have a look at the economic and livelihood dimension of the Mira Paibi movement. It is not that the Mira Paibis have never been challenged internally. The army had tried to manipulate the women vigilance by unleashing operations which involved patronizing the Mira Paibi through various incentives in cash and kind. Political parties are also looking at these groups as vote banks and a potential support base in their activities. Several NGOs also have stepped in to guide these newly organized women towards SHGs, that means self-help groups. With the sporadic nature of work of these Mira Paibis, some of them started looking for year-long activities which will not only be remunerative but will also have respectability for exposing the women to various livelihood strategies. Such groups could be relatively easily coaxed into economically gainful activities. Their initial commitment to social issues becomes diluted. More and more women-centered NGOs have entered the field and the promise of capacity building and teaching them alternative means of livelihood such as soap making, candle making, cake making, manure making and others have lured the women workers away from the selfless activities. Over time, the Mayor of Ibis also became involved in resolving family conflicts, in checking and controlling immoral traffic, and in arresting and handing over the persons who are involved in drug trafficking, etc. Every middle-aged Meite woman has doubled up as the Mira Paibis in the time of crisis. The Mira Paibi movement has become a training ground for women in various activities and undoubtedly it has imbibed critical skills among the women folk. For example, in Monipur, the Ima market or which is also known as Nupi Kate Hill, which that means the women's market, is one of the model markets which are run and managed by women in Impal. If we look at the history of the market, it was established in the 16th century following the imposition of labor system called Laluk Kaba in around 1533, which was a forced labor system in Manipur requiring the male members of the Meite community to work in distant lands or to serve in the army. As a consequence of the system, women had to support their households by cultivating their fields or weaving textiles and then selling the products on improvised markets. The improvised markets finally led to the formation of the Ima Ketel or Ima market. Following India's independence, this Ima market regained prominence as a commercial center and a hub of socio-political discussion. For managing and starting the Ima market in a lower scale and eventually the Mira Paibi movement has played a major role in terms of increasing the economic mobility and empowerment of women, particularly the mothers of Manipur. It maintains a custom of only allowing women who have been married at least once to set up stalls in the market. The women vendors include those who are divorced or have been widowed in the insurgency in Manipur. The vendors are primarily in the age group of 45 to 70 years. The union also turns a credit system for lending to women traders. In fact, the market is managed by a union of all the vendors of the market. Let us have a look at some of the activities of the Ima market. Let me come to the concluding part of this module. Even though the Mira Paibis are entirely a women's affair, they take up, unlike the feminists, gender neutral issues. Emancipation of the society rather than the females is their main motive and objective. The Mira Paibi organization 
has been registered to gain an official identity. In due course of time, the Mayra Pai B uh, took up remunerative activities as self-help group or Mayraps, etc. to sustain the bond when the undesirable activities subsided. They registered themselves and diversified into other livelihoods. The compulsions of pursuing the, uh, different livelihoods have not been able to corrupt these women till date. They also have unwritten hierarchy which shows up in times of crisis. It would be a common sight to find illiterate women leading the movement followed by highly educated women. The beauty of the movement is, is that when the call comes, all of them would become Mera Paibis once again. In 2013, the Times of India awarded the Times of India's Special Social Impact Awards lifetime contribution to Mira Paibis and its five leaders, namely Taksham Ramani, A.K. Janaki Lima, L. Memchobi Devi, Y. Lerik Lima, and Purnimasi Lema. They received the award on behalf of the Mera Paibis. It must be pointed out that besides being Mera Paibis, these women are also associated with many civil society organizations fighting against social injustices, such as All Manipur Women's Reformation and Development Samas, Poirei Leimarol, Kanglamei, Mikhol, etc. A short documentary film on the Mera Paibis was made in 2018. The film, titled Fireflies, was directed by Johnson Raskumar. The film articulated the journey of the Mira Paibis in their and in their struggles to protect the community from the atrocities committed by the state. Social challenges keep on growing more and more complex day by day. However, as before, the Mira Paibis of Manipur would rise to the occasion reinventing themselves and the movement grows. So we come to the end of this module. In the next module, we shall discuss yet another success story of white revolution uh, started by the farmers of the state like Assam. Till then, goodbye and see you again.